Today I wanted to talk to you guys about woks, cooking woks. There's a bunch of woks on the market, right? So you have flat bottom woks, you have round bottom woks. They can be made out of carbon steel or cast iron. I've seen some stainless steel ones. It can get kind of confusing trying to figure out which wok to buy. And I, I've, I've had a wok for a while actually. There's a particular brand that is super, super popular and it's called Taylor and um, Inge. I think I'm saying that right, Taylor and Inge. So I just realized I made a huge mistake throughout the entire video. I apologize. I was mispronouncing my previous round bottom walk. It's actually pronounced Taylor and Ng. So sorry. Please forgive my uncultured dumb <laughs> It's <laughs> It's actually pronounced Taylor and Ng. Taylor and Ng. Sorry guys. They are um, really good woks, right? They're, they're high quality, they're made out of carbon steel, but they're super hard to find because they're so popular, they're, they're always sold out. And about six months ago or so, when I wanted to get a wok, I was in the market for a wok, I ended up buying this. This particular model is a round bottom wok. Comes with the lid, right, to put it on. If you're cooking in an Asian kitchen, then a round bottom wok is fine. But for an American gas stove kitchen, uh, it hasn't been that great. So they include this wok ring, right? You're supposed to put it on your gas burner. And as you're, as you're cooking, it kind of converts your wok into your round bottom wok into something that you can use on a gas stove. Now, if you have an electric stove or if you have an induction uh, stove, you're screwed, you can't use a round bottom wok because you need to make that contact. So you need to have a gas wok, uh, gas stove in order to use these woks. And that's fine, I have a gas stove, but I noticed that when I was using this wok, it wasn't getting as hot as it should. And I think it's because I, I wasn't getting the full, the full flame uh, off of my gas stove. So it wasn't quite heating up the food as hot as it should. I tried to get the same brand, but they've been sold out. I mean, at that time, I was trying to get a flat bottom wok and I got so tired of waiting that I ended up just getting the round bottom and there's, they still don't have them in stock. So I was trying to find like an alternative to this wok. And I, I went on Amazon and there's this uh, there's this wok that's on there right now. It's, it's made by uh, Helen's Asian Kitchen, right? So it just got in the mail. It's a 13.5, uh, inch wok and it comes with a dome. I don't know. It's 13.5, which I, I don't I think I'm pretty sure the Taylor and Inch was 14 But what, what really caught my attention is it looks like a Taylor and Inch copycat or it might even be the same exact thing That's just relabeled right so I wanted to buy it. I wanted to open it up It's a flat bottom and we can take a look at it together And then I'll show you how to season this wok how to clean it because you got to clean it and then season it, carbon steel rusts if you don't properly season it. And because carbon steel rusts, the manufacturer always puts a coating of like this wax residue on there for shipping purposes, right? Uh, to get it to your house. So you have to clean that out really, really well before you can actually use the wok. And then when you do, you have to season it to get that non-stick coating. But once you do that, you know, any carbon steel, any cast iron, the wok is gonna be incredibly non-stick. You're gonna love it. And it's really simple to do. So I'll show you how to clean it and I'll show you how to season it. So let's go ahead and unbox it together and we'll see, you know, what the quality of this this wok is exactly. I really like the, the packaging. It seems pretty well packaged and they seem like they really cared. I have a feeling this is probably the same brand or the same manufacturer that makes the Taylor and & Inge. And it's just re, re branded for this particular person. Yeah, so, you know, when you when you open this thing up, it's it's packaged pretty pretty nicely. It's it's well protected. And we'll put that off to the side. Hopefully, I don't see a handle. Okay, cool. So, this is exactly how my other one showed up, the Taylor and Inch. Um, got to assemble it with the handle. Actually, if I remember correctly, I don't remember the Taylor coming in in a box like that. I, I think it came like in a big shipping container. It does come in a dome. Okay, same thing. And here's the wok itself. So you gotta, you have to assemble it, but here's the wok itself. It's a flat bottom wok, right? And let me show you the differences. So that's a round bottom. This is a flat bottom. 
So real quick, if you're looking to buy a walk, I highly recommend this book. Uh, and the author is Grace Young. Grace Young is known in the Asian dishes, the, the Asian food um, industry, and her books are amazing. So this is, this is the book that I have. I highly recommend this book. She goes into incredible detail. She actually recommends the walk that I, I bought, the Taylor and Inch, and she, she teaches you how to take care of it. She teaches you how to properly season it. She teaches you how to initially season it and clean it when you first get it. She has so many great recipes in here, right? Beautiful, beautiful photos of the food that you're gonna be making with details of exact measurements, how to cook it, searing the meat first. She, her books are probably the most popular books. Definitely pick this up if you're looking to do uh, Asian foods and wok cooking. All right, so we do have to assemble this thing and it's, you know, it's super quick, it's super easy. I don't really remember having an issue doing this before. Well, except for that, right? I just launched the handle. Okay, so the handle's super easy. It has this metal rod, slides through it, and the handle actually hooks up to the end of the, to the end of the walk and you just literally twist it into place. Just make sure that the logo, um, Helen Chin, is facing up. And you can kind of tell the curvature of the handle kind of goes in there. And then you just screw in the, the set screw that they provide, right? Until it's completely flush uh, and you'll feel it. We'll keep going until you can't go anymore. Hand tighten it one more time. Don't over tighten anything. You should be good to go. The lid has the lid handle with the set screw. Just place it on the lid and screw that into place. Okay, so when you do screw in the lid, you know, don't go super crazy. Just hand tighten it. Should be good to go. In the box, they include this wooden spatula. Get rid of that. That's that's not going to do you any good. It's nice that they included it. What you need, though, is a wok spatula, a real wok spatula. This one is stainless steel, and it's relatively cheap off of Amazon. It's important that you get a nice long handle because things get really hot, and you want a wide diameter um, spatula surface, right? And the idea is you're stir frying. You're constantly stir frying in a wok. You know, get something that's heavy duty. This is all stainless steel. It's not gonna rust. Sometimes you might scratch off your seasoning, but it's not that big of a deal. The seasoning will come back as you cook, right? The more that you use it, the better that the pan gets or the wok or the skillet gets, and that coating comes right back. So don't worry about that. Carbon steel is almost indestructible. It's just like cast iron. I'll put this in the link below. Uh, I think this thing costs like, under 12 bucks. All right, so right off the bat, this is really, really well built. Honestly, guys, it's the same exact skillet. I'm sorry, it's the same exact wok as the Taylor in an inch that I have. Uh, I don't see a difference. Uh, I think it's actually the same diameter too. So yeah, uh, this thing was $39, 40 bucks off of Amazon. I'll put the link below so you guys can purchase it for yourself. I think it's actually in my affiliate in the description, but I'll move it up to the top for you guys. Finally got that flat bottom. Look at that. That's a heavy duty flat bottom carbon steel wok. This thing looks really nice. It's really impressive. So let's talk materials real quick. So for woks, you're gonna see that woks can be made of all sorts of things. There's some really cheap woks out there that you wanna avoid. Anything that's advertised as polyurethane or some sort of non-stick coating, uh, stay away from that. The way that woks are shaped, they're gonna draw in a lot of heat and they get hot really quick. So if any wok manufacturer is saying that they have a non-stick coating on there, that makes no sense. It's gonna burn off real quick. The three most popular materials for woks are number one, carbon steel. Try to get a carbon steel wok. Carbon steel has all the benefits of cast iron, like searing capabilities, um, retaining heat, right? But it also has, shares a lot of, um, it shows a lot of benefits of stainless steel as well. Carbon steel is a lot lighter. Carbon steel will heat up quickly and cool down quickly, so it's really easy to maintain temperatures. And like cast iron, carbon steel is incredibly non-stick because the more that you use it, the better that it gets. It's actually gonna develop a uh, what 
what we call, it's gonna develop seasoning, right? It's gonna, it's gonna develop a non-stick surface by just naturally using it. So when you first buy a carbon steel anything, it's super shiny out of the manufacturer, just like this. First, you're gonna see like a nice brown coloring, and then the more that you use it, the darker that that coating gets. Eventually, it's gonna turn black, and it's gonna be incredibly non-stick, and that's what you want. You want that black color. It's just like ca cast iron. The darker that it gets, the more seasoning it gets, the more non-stick it gets, the better it is. And you have to completely dry it after washing it. I always put my carbon steels and cast irons on the stove and I turn up the heat all the way until all the water evaporates. And then you have to put a little bit of oil in there, high heat smoking point oil. You lightly wipe it and coat the entire skillet or wok in this case with the oil and you heat it up until you just see it smoking and then you can you can put it away. That whole process is just, it just takes another five minutes or so after you've washed it, but it maintains the seasoning and it maintains the non-stick coating that you want. That's incredibly important. Get a carbon steel wok. Cast iron will take a long time to cool down because it retains heat so well. Everything has its pros and, and, and cons. I personally have moved towards carbon steel for most of my products, and I have one stainless steel pan, one stainless steel skillet that I use often for like Italian dishes or um, anything that I know that I'm gonna make a sauce out of. Everything else is carbon steel. The next best thing is a light cast iron wok skillet. You don't want a really thick one. You're gonna have incredible heat retention, but then you won't be able to dial down the temperature when you need to and you'll end up burning your food. Wok cooking is all about quickly cooking your, your food. You wanna bring this up to a high temperature and then stir fry everything, right? There's times when you need to dial the temperature down because they get incredibly hot because you'll be burning your food or you're gonna start adding delicate things in there. So with anything, really, you sear the meat. With wok cooking, same thing, you'll sear the meat and then at still at a high temperature, you'll throw in your food, your veggies and your other uh, items that you want in there and you'll stir fry with a high heat and then you'll lower your temperature and you can kind of stir fry with the temperature low or you can use the, the included lid and kind of like steam everything, steam your vegetables to a nice, um, you know, to that perfect like crunchy but you know, cooked temperature and carbon steel is light and that's what you want. You want a nice light, skillet. All right, so now I'm actually gonna show you guys how to wash the wok and get all of the manufacturer's protective wax and oils off. And then I'll show you how to properly season it for the first time and get it ready for that non-stick surface that everyone loves. And then you should be ready to go for your wok. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this wok cleaned up. You can apply this method to any carbon steel wok or skillet, doesn't matter. First thing that you need to pick up though is Barkeeper's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend really helps you get all of that protective wax and coating that the manufacturer puts on. Apply a generous amount of Barkeeper's Friend with a little bit of water, buy a cheap brush that you can get from the Dollar Tree, and start scrubbing. Just make sure that when you do start scrubbing, scrub the top edges of the wok too. That's actually the hardest spot to get the wax off. Apply Barkeeper's Friend to both sides of the wok and scrub the back side as well. Now you may have to apply a little bit more of Barkeeper's Friend. That's okay, apply as much as you need and keep scrubbing. As you can see here, the water's starting to turn like a muddy brown. That's good, that means the wax is actually coming off. So go ahead and rinse it on both sides and do another run of Barkeeper's Friend. You can see that I'm checking the top edges of the wok with my thumb. I like the way that it feels. It feels like most of the wax is off, so if you're comfortable with this stage, you can now apply dish soap. I'm using Dawn Ultra, but you can use your favorite dish soap. Go ahead and scrub both sides, and if you need to, grab the brush again and scrub with the brush. Now, it's important to note that you're not going to get all the manufacturer's wax and grease off with just washing the wok. We're going to need to put it on the flame and do the potato peel method. But before we do that, we need to completely dry this wok. This is an incredibly important step for any cooking material that's made out of carbon steel or cast iron. You need to completely evaporate all the water and moisture from the wok or skillet. 
Then you're going to apply a high smoke point oil. I'm using grapeseed oil. You're going to wipe the oil onto the wok on both sides of the surface. Then put it back on the flame and let it heat until it just smokes. This not only helps prevent the wok from rusting, but it also helps develop and improve the seasoning. You can see that there's still quite a bit of wax left over. So now we're going to apply it to potato peel method. Add a lot more oil, your potato peels, and a lot of salt. We're going to go ahead and stir fry the potato peels. This is an incredibly effective method. The manufacturer's protective wax or seal is naturally melting in this cooking method. The potato peels are acting as an absorbent and they are absorbing the wax or seals. The salt is acting as an abrasive and it's helping you scrub out the waxes. As you're stir frying the potato peels, it's important to move them all around the wok. Don't ignore the top edges. The top edges have the most wax buildup at this point because they are furthest away from the flame. So you need to make sure you scrub the top edges. You can see that we're starting to develop this muddy residue. That's because we've gotten most of the wax off of the wok. We're almost done. Not only has the shipping wax been removed, but we've also developed our initial seasoning. We've now started the nonstick process and we're also protecting the wok from developing any oxidation. Please don't eat the potato peels. They're probably really salty, waxy, and disgusting. Throw out all of the contents and let's go ahead and get this washed and cleaned. It's best to use a soft brush or pad and it's up to you if you want to use dish soap or not. I'm just going to go ahead and use hot water and a brush because there's really not much to clean but if you did have sticky bits you could buy a plastic scraper which would help you remove anything that did stick without damaging the seasoning. Anytime you wash carbon steel or cast iron, you have to follow this final step. Grab a paper towel and thoroughly wipe both sides of the wok. We're going to start the burner again and we're going to put the wok on the burner until all of the moisture and water evaporates. Remember, if you do not do this, your wok will rust. Apply a small amount of high smoke point oil and wipe down the wok on both sides. Put the wok back on the burner and let it heat up until you just see the oil smoking. Let the wok cool before storing it away, but that's it. This last simple step will ensure that you have a wok that's going to give you a lifetime of great cooks. If you guys like this video, if you thought it was informative, please like, subscribe. If you want me to make a video comparing cast iron, stainless steel, and carbon steel, let me know. Until then, I hope this was informative. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.